Greetings to all of humanity. It's really a joy, it's a pleasure, it's my honor to be out here as usual, greeting you and bringing this message of emancipation to you, whereby I'm pointing you to look no other place but to look inwardly to discover that your real identity is your divinity. And that is why this morning I want to speak to you concerning the Savior within you. So, as I would have said before, I have no other place to point you but to look within yourself. Now, if the Savior is within you, then it means that the Redeemer is within you. It also means that the Provider is within you. It also means that the Healer is within you. And that everything is taking place within you. And that is why I want to let you know what is the basis of my teaching, especially if you are listening to me for the very first time. I teach that the Bible addresses the human mind and must be interpreted psychologically. That the Bible is not literal, neither is the Bible secular history. And that the Bible is written symbolically. And it has no reference to anyone who existed thousands of years ago or to any actual event that took place on the earth thousands of years ago. From Genesis 1 to Revelation 22, it's all a great psychological drama. It all has to do with the human psyche. Now, if you look at your life, from your birth to your death, it's all a great psychological drama also. Because it is your own thoughts that is creating your reality. Therefore, I'm teaching you how you can create your reality consciously. If you look inwardly and realize that there is no one to change but self. Okay? So basically, I am teaching you how to discover yourself by teaching you that the scripture represents your spiritual autobiography so it's all about you and no one else therefore what I'm gonna do I'm gonna teach you something concerning your spiritual autobiography by going to the written book to show you that you must become the living book or the expression of the written word so here this is what it says in 2 Corinthians 13 and 5. And this has always been one of my favorite scriptures to teach you how to challenge yourself or how to examine yourself or how to prove for yourself when I tell you that imagination creates reality, how you can prove it for yourself and prove that the creator is within you. And prove that the Savior is within you. That the Healer is within you. That the Redeemer is within you. And that you are to restore yourself by the renewing of your mind. And how you have to transform. And transformation is a change in a form. Okay? And when you understand how to transmute from the formless to the form. Or taking something from the invisible to the visible. Then you would realize... That the creator is within you. That the savior is within you. But here is a scripture that is giving you that clue. So I'm going to read it for you. So 2 Corinthians 13 and 5. And this is what it says. Examine yourself. So instead of examining others. And criticizing others. And judging others. Because this is what secular Christianity does. It puts you in a state of mind whereby you're seeing the fault of others and not seeing your own fault because you're not looking within your own self because you feeling so comfortable in your organization which is basically your denomination and it's teaching that anyone who questions your teaching you're going to see them differently and you've been taught to judge people to condemn people and so on because you're actually operating in a state of fear because there's only one creative energy in this world, okay? Our one power in this world. And each and every one of us are using that one power. But you can use the power in the 
and the fear or love. So you can be vibrating under the energy of fear or the energy of love, but the same one energy. Okay, because it can transform, it can be transmuted. Okay, so the man who is today, the thief, tomorrow, if he rearrange his mind, he can be the lawyer or he can be the judge. Okay, now let me go on. Examine yourselves, whether you be in the faith. When you say whether you be in the faith, you have to understand what is faith. Faith is you being loyal to the unseen. Because faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. The evidence of things not seen is teaching you that when you have a thought or when you have an idea, when you're imagining something in your mind, no one knows of your imagination until the expression, until the manifestation. So whatever life is in a seed, you wouldn't know the life of that seed until it grows into the, into the tree and then it blossom and bring forth fruit. So too is your thought, your action, and then your manifestation. So your action is, is a part of the blossoming. Okay? And then the fruit is the manifestation. So everything is taking place in that process. Thought, action, manifestation. And when you look, when you look at farming in the natural you take a seed and you sow that seed in the soil and it goes through the process of death burial and resurrection and from the sunlight and the rain it starts bursting forth and then at a certain time and a certain season it starts to bring forth its blossom and from the blossom it starts producing its fruit which is the manifestation and then you can eat of it and that is why you're told also that unless a corner weed falls in the ground and dies, it abides alone. But if it dies, it brings forth much fruit. So if you're going to be fruitful and you're going to bring forth, you have to die to your ego self. You have to come to realize that there's no God outside of yourself. That there's no creator, no, no, no redeemer, no savior, no healer outside of yourself. That you are the great physician who must heal thyself. You are the one who must know thyself. So your focus must always be in, and must always be on yourself. So you have to be in all in constant examination of yourself. And how how can you do that? Through thoughts. By being the policeman of your thoughts. By controlling your thoughts. By being the master of your mind, instead of allowing your, your mind to just master you and allow your thoughts to go wild, you have to control your thinking because you come to realize how powerful thoughts are and how thoughts become things and that we become what we think about most of the time so whatever we are feeding our minds upon, that is what we would bring forth so you say here, whether you be in the faith so faith is teaching you the process of creation, how to create. That is why I say by faith the world was created. Showing you that everything stems from a thought. That's why it says God said let there be and there was. When you realize that God is the creator in man, who is man's imagination. And everything had to first be imagined, it had to first be taught, it had to first be an idea. Then you will realize also that a word is a thought expressed. So the first expression of our thought is in our words, our speech. That's why it says also that the power of life and death is in the tongue. And it also says that it is not what goes into a man that defiles him. It's what comes out of a man. That is why you have to be on some good mental diet. And many people need to go on a real mental diet before they even thinking about going on a physical diet in terms of not eating this, not eating that. But you, when you go on a, a mental diet, it is you say, I'm not going to partake of negative thinking. I'm not going to partake of the negative news. I'm not going to partake in propaganda. I'm not going to partake in any kind of thing that is bringing doubt and fear and limitation upon me including superstition 
including religion, politics, all these things are to distract you and to keep you in limitation. So you have to test yourself. Check yourself. So you say prove your own selves. You have to prove yourself. So let me just read back the whole thing for you. you say examine yourselves. Whether you be in the faith. Prove your own selves. How that Jesus Christ is in you. Now I always teach you. That Jesus is an addition to the Christ. Because there's no such a man that ever existed 2,000 years ago. So what they do to keep you in idolatry? They add a name of an idol next to the highest version of yourself. Next to the highest experience or the highest state of consciousness that you will vibrate to, which is coming to your Christ self. Your Christ energy, which is coming to the ninth power. The higher power. That's why there's no number higher than nine. So when you come to the nine power and you come to self-realization, you realize that you are the Christ. You are the Savior and the Redeemer. You are the healer. You are the provider. You discover your true self. And you break out of the amnesia, which is the state of forgetfulness in which you're born. Because we all born here in a state of forgetfulness, not knowing who we are. And so we are living in this life seeking to know who we are. And a man would have written a, a lovely book called Man Search for Himself. That's a good book. Because we all have been searching for ourselves. And so many of us get caught up in religion and get chopped in religion but they all of them having their own different interpretation but i'm teaching you that the name of god is i am and you can never say i am and not referring to yourself and that is why the universal question of life would always be who am i and when the answer comes it must be i am i am that i am i'm whatever i believe myself to be for as a man thinketh in his heart so is he so when you read the story in Exodus, in Exodus 3 concerning Moses, you're reading of your own spiritual biography because Moses meant to be born and to be drawn out of the water. You were surrounded by water when you were in the basket in your mother's womb. And then your mother, your mother water bag had to, be, had to be burst first. And then the Red Sea have to, have, have to flow again. Because the Red Sea was stopped. When your mother became pregnant, she wasn't seeing her period anymore. And then the Red Sea started flowing again. Before, you, you, before you've been expressed here. And when you've been expressed here in this dimension, you find yourself trapped in time, space and matter. You find yourself in limitation. So if you want to use the toilet, you have to, you have to take, use your feet. And walk go to the to the area of the toilet. You have to take off your clothes. You have to do all of these things. You understand to defecate because why? The body is a servant to the mind. So you find yourself in slavery and find everyone around you trapped in this kind of slavery. And because you realize that this body, it's a it's a it's a slave to the mind. And so my brother and my sisters, you realize that this life is the game of life. And we are playing a game of master and servant, of mind and body. So you can choose to be the mind or you can choose to be the body. And the body is trapped in the five senses where you see taste, touch and smell and so on. And the animals live in that level of existence. And we who are higher than the animals and given dominion over the animals, we have speech and mind. So if you don't want to use your speech and mind and use your mental faculties such as your reasoning and your perception, your intuition, your will, your imagination and your memory to discover your true identity, then no one can help you. No one can save you. No one can redeem you. There's nothing anyone can do for you. 
And that is why the sin of blasphemy is self-denial. If you doubt yourself, there's nothing no one can do to, to help you. If you don't believe in yourself, how do you expect anyone to believe in you? If you do not love yourself, how do you expect anyone to love you? So my brother, my, my sisters, everything starts with self-love. That's why you have to examine yourself. See if you really love yourself. See if you've been focusing on saving yourself before you try to save others. All religion wanna say, all religion is doing is having you focusing on trying to save others by calling them sinners and calling them unsaved. And you're fooling yourself. So here it says, examine yourselves, whether you be in the faith. Prove your own self. Know ye not that no ye not your own selves? You mean you ain't know your own self? That Jesus Christ is in you? That it is a power in you? And they use a name? Which is just a personification of your own human imagination? And you believe as a man who's existed 2,000 years ago? He said, except you be reprobates. He said, if you don't believe in yourself, you're worse off than an infidel. He said, if you don't provide for your household, where, where your household be? Your household is not your, your wife and your children as you think, you know. This is your household. This is the house in which God dwells. So if you don't use your mental faculties, how are you going to provide? How are you going to bring value to humanity? How are you going to uplift humanity? How are you going to use your talents? How are you going to use your creativity? What is your purpose on earth? Are you just existing? Are you just a feeder? Do you know there are some people who satisfy to just eat, sleep, and shit? That's what the animals does. Eat, sleep, and shit. We have to be more productive. There are some people going to live their life just blaming slavery. And they didn't realize that they're in mental slavery when they think like that. The people who are going to live the rest of their life in false identity. Referring to themselves based on some sort of race. When there's only one race. Which is the human race. Because only God exists in the world. Because the name of God is I am. Every one of us have to say I am because that's our name. And what are you going to say? That you're poor or you're rich, you have to say, I am. So my brother, my sisters, whenever you use the name of I am, you have to try not to desecrate that name by saying negative things about yourself, but saying the best things about yourself and reprogram your subconscious mind to think more highly of yourself, to see yourself expanding in consciousness and in awareness see yourself expanding socially financially emotionally in every way see yourself expanding see yourself as an important person in this life see yourself having more than enough see your cup full and running over because it has been promised to you it's the lack of compensation you're told to give and it shall come back to you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall man, men give, give into your bosom. Because why? Giving is receiving. Therefore, the most, the most greedy people on the earth are people who always want to receive, but they don't want to give. They all want to receive, but they don't want to give. And that is why those who are of a higher mindset, they're using things like charity to continue to keep people in Africa in poverty. Because they're living in a beggy beggy mentality. All throughout the Caribbean people living in a beggy beggy mentality. Why? Because the politicians also are vibrating in the, in the beggy beggy mentality. All the presidents and prime ministers in the Caribbean. They always give an impression of a beggy beggy mentality. So the people they get caught up in politics, they get caught up in religion, and 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 and, and the politicians are who are running the educational system and behind the educational system, and so they they put it in a way to get you into a employee mentality and a beggy beggy mentality also. 
when you have a power inside of you that you can use to create your reality consciously for you can create I can acquire your every desire if you realize that you are the savior you are the redeemer you are the provider you are the healer you are the all you are the everything no one have any power over anyone and then all these governments have another government that you don't see that is over them and they are the ones who control the money not the governments of your country control the money those who are printing money they are the real ones who are running this kind of economy but the real economy is your mentality so if you, if you change your mentality then you will be the lord and master of your own economy because you are building your own wall that's why he said let, 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 let there be and there was you are the one who have to say let there be by creating your reality consciously and then when you see the manifestation of that which you desire you will come into rest you will come into sabbath that's your seventh day when you're gonna rest so my brother and my sisters you have to examine yourself and realize that the savior is within you that the Christ is within you or you are reprobate that is why the fool said in his heart there is no God who is the fool I said it, saying in his heart that there is no God the man who said I am not God the man who believed in a savior of 2000 years ago the man who believed in a God in the sky that's the fool where he saying it in his heart which means he do not believe in himself that's what it is teaching you. I remember one time I was in the city and I met a man giving a check and I just tried to talk to him. In less than a minute, he called me a fool and tell me the fool said in his heart that there is no God. And he inspired me right there to make, make a video on that. And just recently I met him, giving out this check and I said to him, I said, what happened? Jesus can't show up to heal Corona. These days when he see me, he don't even want to speak with me, but uh, he doesn't have anything against me because these days he's laughing a lot with me because he realized I turn around and laugh after him because I told him that he inspired me to make a video concerning the fool because the fool is the man who do not believe in himself. He do not believe in his God self. He do not believe in his creative self. He do not believe in his productive self. When man needed to improve in communication, True inspiration, which is God in man, which is man's human imagination, by which all things have been made. And without imagination, there isn't anything made that was made. That's St. John 1 and verse 3. Many people think that him is speaking of a man 2,000 years ago. No, it's a personification of the human imagination. It takes the human imagination to give us the phone. But we needed to improve and increase and expand in communication. When we needed to expand in transportation, it was imagination. That's how we got the automobile. When we need to improve even further and both communication and, and, and transportation, it was the aeroplane because you have to be in constant communication when you're taking off and when you are landing and even while you're in the air the pilot has to be in communication with those at the airport so you see how everything is connected so my brother and my sisters everything just keep expanding and that's why we have to expand our consciousness also by you coming to realize that the Christ, the Savior, is within you. So my brother and my sister, the power is no other place but within you. But before I come to a close, I just want to read one more scripture for you. And it's taken from Galatians. Galatians 4, 24. Okay, it's Galatians 4. Could you find me please? Galatians 4, 24. I'm going to quote it for you while I wait okay now i have it now okay let me read it for you speaking about abraham sarah and so on which version is this King James. okay 
Okay, this is why I say, you say which things are. Let me read. Let me read from verses 22. It says, For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by the man made, the other by a by the a free woman. But I won't go into those right now. Okay? Because be, it's be, be, it based on the inner and the outer and so on. But I won't go into that conscious, subconscious mind and so on. Okay, I won't, I won't go into that at this moment. But he who was of the bond woman was born after the flesh. But he of the free woman was by promise. Which things are an allegory. For these are the two covenants. The one from the Mount Sinai which gender to bondage which is Hagar. But the main point I want to get across to you here is the word allegory. An allegory is a story whereby the characters, they represent ideas. They're not real. They're not historical figures. So that's the point I want to get to you. To show you it's all allegory. And that it's solar allegory has been written in the Bible. When you understand the sun and you understand the sign of the 12, the 12 signs of the zodiac, you understand that the Bible contains solar allegory, it contains astrology, astronomy, it contains a uh, phallic, it's a book of mind science. So the point I really want to get across to you, let me nail it, nail it here, is that if the story of Abraham, Sarah and Hagar, if, if it's an allegory, then you know that the story of Jesus Christ of 2,000 years ago, it's an allegory. It's not 2,000 years ago. There's no man 2,000 years ago. The Savior has always been with man. That's why he said, I will be with you even until the end of the age. Your imagination is always with you. Your consciousness is always with you. Your awareness is always with you. You can never get rid of awareness. You can never get rid of your consciousness. They can take a man and put him in the, ma in the mental asylum, but he's still aware of being. He's still aware of being. And even until death, but it's just a transition of your consciousness. It's just another point of awareness. You will still be conscious. I'm speaking from experience because when I exit my skull and came out of my body and everything disappeared, nothing was solid anymore. I became one with the wind. And I realized what it means to say, oh death, where is thy sting? Oh grave, where is thy victory? I understand what it means never to fear death. God is not real. That we are eternal. We are spirit having a human experience. So with that being said, my brother and my sisters, I think I would have said more than enough there. You have enough to digest. And I want you to just regurgitate upon it. Listen it over and over because that's how you're going to impress the subconscious mind when you listen something over and over. Repetition is very important. So my brother and my sisters, let me just put everything together. What I'm saying to you, that the power is within you. That everything is within you. That everything exists in the human imagination. And that's the savior in man. Christ is the imagination. God is, the, is your imagination. The creator in man. Therefore you must use the creative power in you. To achieve your every desire. And that is why. If you don't quite understand. You need to have a mentor. Yes. We are each and every one. We are supposed to be our own guru. But it takes someone who proceeds you in the awakening. To help you. To come up another level. And when you come up that other level, there comes a time you can stand on your own. You can see it in nature. The eagle will feed its young one. And then there comes a time when that young eagle must have its first solo flight. Because the mother will take it out on its back and so on and fly to teach it. And the mother will, will, will teach the young one how he's supposed to when he grow up. How we supposed to feed the young one also so it, could, it would take its mouth and put it in the mouth of the young one and, 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 and regurgitate back everything right inside of its mouth, all the food that, that you would have already processed. But it, it comes a time now when that young eagle has to learn to fly on its own. And you know what the, 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 the mother eagle will do? It will mash up the nest. 
destroy the nest. They have to fly somehow. You know, there's a lot of there's a lot of black people <laughs> who can't swim. So many of them they drown in um in the disaster in a uh, uh, with Katrina, right in New Orleans and so on because they couldn't swim. In my culture, where I'm living down here, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, you know what the adults used to do? They'll invite us to go to the beach. And when we're at the beach, they'll grab you and they'll throw you out in the water and leave you there to jump. You either swim or jump. So my brother and my sisters, I want to come here to a close by saying to you, you can either swim to safety or you can stay in mediocrity and jump by keep looking outwardly. So I'm saying to you, the best choice is to look inwardly to discover that your real identity is your divinity. So I want to say to you, my brother and my sister, if you listen to me, what I'm saying to you, if it's making sense to you, it is for you. And if it is for you, and you haven't subscribed already, I encourage you to subscribe, to like, to comment, or to share this video. But let me say this, that this message I bring to you, it is a single eye message of self-realization, which Matthew 6, 22 says, that if I be single, your whole body will be full of light. My brother and my sister, had it been that I would have experienced that single eye opening within me, when I awake within myself like a fiery bin, I would have heard the and all the wind and ascended and rolled the stone away and came out and became invisible. I wouldn't have been here bringing this message to you, saying to you that this body is the tomb in which the Christ is buried and you must rose from the dead and understand the true virgin birth. And that is why I always give you the symbol of the single eye by putting my hand above my crown chakra. Saying to you that when you look at the symbol and the US dollar, it's not an evil symbol, but the symbol of the all seeing eye of God within you. And when you have that experience, you will come to realize that it is the rising of the S U N in a S O N, and that it is the dawning of a new day in your life. For the sun parallels the human imagination, and the human imagination parallels the sun. For without the sun, there is no life and there is no light. And without the human imagination, there isn't anything made that was made. And you're told. In Psalms 84, them that the Lord thy God is a son as in a S-U-N and a shield and no good thing will he withhold from you. And in Malachi 4 and 2, that the son as in the S-U-N of righteousness shall arise in you with he 